So did you uh, get your dog some tailored nutrition? <laughs> I was laughing about that. <laughs> I was sitting there waiting for the vet to come out. Is it dog food? Yeah. It's just yeah, actually, custom made dog food? or uh, No, it's more of a, um, I guess if you want to call it like a. Is it real? Is that where it has like yeah. chunks of meat yeah. and shit? Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 That's yeah. where you're feeding your dogs good. Do you have dogs? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Black Lab. Yeah. Oh, okay. Chola. Chola? Yeah. Nice. Should be, jeez, eight? Eight in April. Damn. Yeah. yeah. So you got two kids, a wife, a dog, mm-hmm. too many businesses to count. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the kids' fish, though. Fish. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, my uh, Amy got her for me for my birthday a couple months after we got married. Mm. As yeah. a pup? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 fresh. So she's good. Just had her dental uh, appointment today. We nice. have that pet insurance on it, so we have to abide by their, yeah. their rules. Dude, we keep going back and forth on dogs so much because Blakely just fucking loves dogs. So we want to for her so bad. And then part of me is like, you know what? Like, I'll bring it to the office. But then I'm like, I'll probably skip the pup phase so I can just have an already trained dog. <laughs> but then we miss the puppy phase for Blakely. And Shannon doesn't want me to leave the dog with her all day. Right. <laughs> Come home. and Now with us, it was, it was, I mean, obviously it was before the kids. Um, but it actually, she's very, very well trained. And it took us a lot of time. And, and I mean, she's trained to... Ring the doorbell. Ring the, there's a bell hanging from the doorknob. No so shit. She rings it when she has to go outside. She has an actual poop box. She only poops and urinates in that box. So outside. It's, so, it's not all, yeah. so it's not all over the yard. So we're not <laughs> stepping on it. <laughs> Your dog rings a bell. <laughs> yeah, we oh. actually originally taught, taught her to shut it. So when she came back, she would shut the door. But obviously, she would get on her hind legs and kind of paw at it. So obviously, it was just all scratched up. Dude, do you have like a... Is there something inside of you that just, and I don't mean this as, a, as in a way that you're never satisfied, but that you always want more or to do more or see more, or create more. Like I literally, <laughs> I've known you for so long and I always find out random shit about you <laughs> and like time. more shit you're doing. <laughs> like it's just crazy. Uh, yeah. I think, I think that's the, the, the nonstop, I guess the, the just wanting to find better ways, easier ways at that too. Honestly, the whole, you know, training the dog was, you know, we don't want to have to go outside and, you know, you're playing ball outside in the grass and you s- step in a pile of poop. Yeah. Right? So it's like, so I literally built her a box and every three hours for, I think it took her four days, but I'm talking three hours, like nine o'clock at night, midnight, three o'clock mm. in the morning, six o'clock in the morning to where you get up, put her leash on, walk her to the door, grab her nose, hit the bell. Walk her all the way to the box, have her go, and then walk her all the way Damn. back. Damn. Yeah. yeah. But it was more of, again, convenience to a certain extent. Yeah. And also, I mean, labs are just, I mean, a lot of dogs are, right? But labs are just super smart. So, you know, with the, with the idea of wanting kids, we always figured, well, we, we need to get a pup, but we also need to make sure that she knows how yeah. to handle herself and yeah. all that. So. How do you delegate all this time? Like that was, uh, the, we had a couple questions about time um, and we'll get into Q and a soon, but um, that's something that always baffles me with you. And like, I always try to like, kind of like learn from you more and more and you've helped me with, but like, do you have a specific philosophy or like a method or like anything, like I guess advice in general, like how do you delegate all this time? Cause you just do so much stuff. I think, I think for me, it's, it's really, really simple now to where, you know, making a list and what's at the top of the list mm. and working your way down. Um, for a lot of time growing up, it was, you know, just a lot of stuff's got to get done and, you know, you got to figure out the time to do it. Yeah. And over time, I think also you start, when, once you start kind of finding yourself a little bit more and what it is that you really want to be involved with and all that, you start learning, you know, by failures, obviously, right? Of not putting attention or too much attention on something and then all of a sudden it fails or it's not do, not doing as good as you want it to do. Um, so through that, it was just constantly working on, one, knocking out the most important things out and two, really just having this philosophy, I guess, of, you know, not really stressing out about everything, you know, and to me, 
you know, going through sickness and all that, it really just paints a picture of like the time is now, but as long as you're doing the consistent things on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, everything just happens. Everything will work out because of the time that you're putting into it. So to me, I've never had this philosophy of like, you know, in five years, I need to be here, which I did at one point. Right. And that just cost me time Mm -hmm. from everything else. And then once you have one of those situations where you have somebody close to you pass away and, and I mean, you and I just discussed this not too long ago with, with, with your family, that it really just puts things into perspective. But I think the difficult thing is how many times do we hear that, but nobody really actually makes a change. Right. And we hear it on a daily basis. You know, we hear it on the motivational quotes every day, mm-hmm. right? Like, this is the year. This is the year. 2020 is my year. Time you is know, now. Time is now. And people listen to podcasts every day, telling them the same thing over and over and over again. And yet they wake up tomorrow and do the same thing that they've mm-hmm. been doing for years, right? So I think it's really having that philosophy with yourself of, like, how much, how much time are you willing to give to just kind of sit in the same place? Right? I think there's way too much. There's a lot of information out there and a ways to get information through podcasts, through books, more than any other time in, 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 in my life at least, to where there really is no excuse to not do what you want to be doing. Yeah. There really isn't. I mean, that's uh, to me, when somebody, oh, well, because of this. Like, if you go through all the angles, all everything that's available to you, like, there's, it's, it's, a hundred percent fear based on why you're not doing what you want to do. That's what it comes down to. It's just doubt. It's doubt. How do you get over that then? So to me, I always push people to take that first small step. Right. And the crazy part about it is that to me, it's a very small step, right? But if I put myself in their shoes many years ago for me, that small step just seems, I mean, huge. Yeah. (laughs) Right. So what is that? And, and really it's, having the conversation of, okay, even that small step, one, why are you so afraid of it? And through conversation, it comes out like, what are you afraid to lose? That's really what it comes down to, right? Any decision you're going to make, it, the fear comes in. A lot of times people don't know what the fear even is. They're just scared to do it. Mm. So finding out what is it that you're afraid to lose? Cause it's something's got to give, right? So whether it's somebody that has been in their career for five, 10 years, just hating life, right? Hating their work life schedule and all that. Obviously for there, the fear is I put in so much time into this career. Like what if this other one doesn't work out? And it's a simple reaction for me to say, well, you have 10 years in this career. What's to say you can't go back to that career. Yeah. Right. Like try this out, right? You want to open a, you want to open a flower shop man. open a flower shop. And if for whatever reason it doesn't work out, Go back and get another job doing what you were doing. That's see that that's the logical thing. Do you think it has uh, the reason people don't do that is because like from the emotional side of the brain, it's more worried about what people will think or judgment or even on yourself. Because I even I remember, literally, I like I was kind of joking but kind of serious. I remember talking to Shannon way back saying, "Worst case, I'll go get my old job at Rite Aid back. Mm-hmm. It paid my bills, right? And it's like right, like right. if I fail flat on my face, I'll be fine. Something will happen. Right. But I also wasn't worried about her judging me and there's nobody else I cared about mm-hmm. judging me. Does, mm-hmm. does that make sense? Yeah. And you know, it's funny you say that cause just yesterday I was on a call with somebody and she's been coaching with me for a month and a half now. And a lot of the things that she wasn't doing, she, on the first call, she wrote out what it is she wanted to do. And there was literally nothing that was stopping her other than significant, significant other. Mm. Now, to me... That's a hard battle. It is, right? Because now it's... They've built a relationship for a while now. And anything that... It's almost like... For me, it's a question of... So have you been lying to that person this whole time? Of who you really are and mm-hmm. who, you, who you really want to be? To fit that mold that maybe they were looking for? Or are you just lying to yourself? Mm-hmm. So I think that, you know... Again, having that circle of... I don't care if it's one person or if it's five people... That will be happy for you no matter what it is that you're doing, right? Because nowadays it's all about what other people say, you know? And, and, and you know, we've had this discussion before to where, like, the other people's opinions are so valuable 
and and random people at that, right? I've used the example over and over again of how many people put it on Instagram. Like, what dress should I wear today? The red one or the black one? And they go with whatever people vote, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's like, man, what do you want to wear? And what are you going to feel comfortable wearing? And, you know, Joey out in London is going to vote for the black one, so you're going to wear the black one? Yeah. And so I think I think we're now... We have because we have this access to other people's opinions. It's even more so, right? Mm-hmm. Where before, it was more in, internal, whether it was family or your, what's what are my friends going to say. Um, to where now is just what's everybody going to say, and does that fit that mold? Yeah, that's and that's one of the reasons why I love what we do inside of content because it's all educational based, mm-hmm. and there's not. Like, I still put my personality right, in right. it, but it's never, it's never about that or, or worrying about what other people think. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's a tough one, man. I think that there's so much comparison and judgment, not only from like you're worried about what other people think, but also um, judging yourself and then actually like projecting that. Because there's a lot of times where I talk to people and they assume people are going to judge them or they're worried about that or comparison, whatever it may be. It's really just a story in their own head. They're actually judging themselves. They're not right. secure with themselves and they're projecting that onto the people. Right. It's like the, the easiest way to explain it is the whole gym thing. When people go in the gym and they're thinking about like, fuck, this person's probably watching me look stupid. Mm-hmm. That person's over there thinking the same thing about them. Like, mm-hmm. and it's just like a bunch of people in the gym worrying about what everybody's watching them do and nobody's watching each nobody's other. Nobody's watching. Nobody cares. No. And I think, and even like, if they were, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> and I think there's nothing wrong with saying like, like I'm not careless when I say I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. It's just because I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I, I've talked about this. I'd be curious of your thoughts. I've talked about auditing your circle. A lot of times Mm -hmm. when people are like trying to lose weight or trying to reach their goals and they can't like, you have to audit your circle because if your circle doesn't support your goals, Mm -hmm. it's not the circle you want to be with. Right. Period. So Mm -hmm. if they are judging you or are making you feel that way, like why are you putting yourself around those people? Right. And uh, a, I think over time, it's just because that was the comfortable thing, right? So in another scenario, right, a friend of ours, you know, had a group of friends growing up and just recently started making changes for life. Better, way better changes, right? And from that, friends started kind of falling off mm-hmm. because she didn't fit the mold anymore, mm-hmm. right? So to me, you know, it's, it's again, the question I always, I continuously audit my circle, but I have a funny way of looking at it because... I have my circle, but I always let in one or two people that don't fit that mold, right? Because to me, it's I'm opening the door for them to see what it could be, what it could be, mm-hmm. right? Because if we continuously say, well, you know what, this is my circle and I'm really not going to yeah. hang out with these, then to a certain extent, we're not, we're doing them a disservice and not that my circle is the best circle, right? But audit in the whole auditing conversation, you know, what are the important things in that circle, right? Is it obviously family values, right? Core values, go-getters, you know, something like that to where everybody's pushing each other. And even if you're not pushing each other, you're just happy for each other, mm-hmm. right? Because happiness can trigger so many positive things in someone's life just by, man, I'm proud of you, right? So I always let in two or three of people that aren't really there just so they can see. And, and if anything walk away with something positive from, from whatever they've seen with us or, you know, the whole conversation of, man, you guys, you guys are always just having a good time. And, you know, you guys are all, if you look at our circle, like everybody's successful in their own right. Um, whether it's entrepreneurs, whether it's people that work nine to fives, it doesn't matter. Right. Cause it, you're, you're happy with doing whatever it is that you want to do. I posted a quote on the TCM profile Maybe this morning, I think it was this morning, and it said, uh, life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond to it or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, like your per- perspective, right. right? Do you think like a big part of this whole conversation of like who your circle is, how they act, how you act, how you have stories in your head and all that stuff is really just perspective? It's just how you interpret situations? Because I even think about like, like the whole like you have to versus you get to. Right. Or... Like you're you're a busy motherfucker, but it's not like you're stressed out. It's like you're happy to be that busy. You're you're keeping yourself busy, and right. it, and I think like some people like that. It's that whole like your anxiety is your excitement thing, right? right? Like like if you can turn that perspective to say like no, this is like shit. I'm excited about. I'm anxious because I care about this deeply. Um, do you think that changes well, all this? To me, I think I think it goes hand in hand. Where for instance, with me, 
the being busy, it's, you know, it's the whole kind I'm not busy just to be busy, right? It's not only busy just doing random stuff, right? But it's intentional and also like playing the long game of what the goal is for each area of my life, if you want to call it that, right? It's because I have friends that are super busy and they're miserable, right? So again, it's what are you filling your time with that's just making you so miserable? Like, mm. like you don't have to do certain things. You don't have to do anything you don't yeah. want to do yeah. at the end of the day, right? So to me, it's the feeling busy, you know, where, where there's times where I have to take a step back and say, man, like, can I really take that on right now? And always have the question of if I take that on, what's going to suffer, mm. right? So non-negotiables, right, our family, all that, to where, like, I want to be able to go to my kids' basketball practice every Wednesday at 6. Today they have, they start Taekwondo at 420. So before, just last week, was 6 o'clock. So now what do I have to do this Wednesday to be able to be home at 4 o'clock so I can get them at, to practice at 420? Mm. So in that conversation, like, what's going to suffer from that? Now, because my wife is understanding right kind of like with shannon to where she knows that at times things will switch off yeah whether it's making more money here because of these things and she's she understands i guess my vision so clearly that she's okay with it so the anxiety moment that people feel when they're taking too much on i think it's more again of because they're not in the right alignment of doing the things that they really want to do because it, it wouldn't be a bad anxiety, you know, it'd be a good anxiety of really just having that thought of, man, I'm just blessed I get to do this. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you know, so in conversation with family, it's always like, oh man, it's just, I, I got to go to work tomorrow again. It's like, man, no, you get to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> right. You can always not have a job. Yeah. Right. Like, or when somebody's an entrepreneur and all of a sudden it's like, man, I've gotten so busy. And it's like, that what do you want? Point. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I mean, again, like yeah. you, you, there's this, there's this fine line of like, you, you really have to have both and you have to be able to manage both of, yeah, I wanted to be out on my own for the flexibility of hours and time mm -hmm. and all that. But also like, you got to be ready for what comes with it. Yeah. Right. And, and you do, you do yourself a disservice if you're just going to shut down you know, leads coming in because you're busy enough. Yeah. Right. I think that's been a that's been a big learning curve for me the last probably like year or two is is like going like all in on being an entrepreneur and then like wanting to be so busy and wanting to like jam pack my schedule and do all these things and then when it actually happens like keeping calm and like reminding myself that I get to versus I right. have to and not getting anxious and delegating like letting go of mm -hmm. things so like I don't always have control because that's the only way we can continue to grow um, and even like uh, growing pains with Shannon like her seeing mm -hmm. how busy she got or how fast things grew and her being there this weekend was really cool because um, she got to see me in that element and, and there was multiple times where people were like how do you find balance in all this mm -hmm. and I literally would just pointed at her because right. she was sitting in the crowd. Well, and I was exactly. like, yep. that's how, that's mm -hmm. my accountability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think that's a big piece of it too? Is like, I, I, that's always a hard answer for me because some people aren't married or right. don't have kids. And I'm right. like, oh, like it's easy for me because my wife and daughter are waiting for me at home. So I'm right. excited to go see them. And like Blakely wants to play. Like mm -hmm. that makes it easy for me to like stop grinding or like right. delegate my time, be more productive during the day so I can have that time at night. Or, or like you said before, the same thing with me is like, um, like Shannon knows if there's like a, an appointment or anything for Blakely, she'll put on like a Monday or Tuesday. Cause I'm mm -hmm. the most flexible in those days. Right. I'll work late. Like I'll go back and finish stuff at night in my office if I need to or whatever, because I want to be there for that thing. Right. Right. And I can do that, you know, but like there's that give and take. Yeah. And, and it, again, you know, the conversation of, you know, it's easier for you and I now cause we have that support system at home. Right. And the understanding side of it. I, I also, you know, I challenge, especially in, in the coaching group, people that aren't even dating anybody to kind of start building that consistency or that foundation within themselves because mm -hmm. they'll attract that. Yeah. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to attract what it is that you want, what you stand for and being comfortable with yourself in a, in a position where you meet somebody and they just don't fit your criteria, then it's no. Right. And being okay with saying it's no. Right. Um, Obviously, you know, with all the other variables that come into play, um, the most important thing is just really just staying true to yourself. But I think the issue is when people get into helping other people or relationships when they're not even 
centered or they haven't even really found their true purpose or their passion, then you're kind of just leading people astray, mm -hmm. right? And that's what I was, you know, referring to the client that I was speaking about yesterday is, again, like, did you act a certain way and say certain things for that person so they could like you, essentially, yeah. right? And now, after years, now you're finding yourself in a position of, man, like, what do I do? Because that's not who I really was, and that's not where I'm at right now is not really where I wanted to be, mm -hmm. right? So it's really just comes down to, are you just being 100% honest with yourself? Yeah, and like, I think having clarity on who, so like what I always say is, if you have a, like setting a goal is step one. Step two is is figuring out who you need to become in order to get to that goal. Mm -hmm. And then like asking yourself constantly, like, are you aligned with the, the values of the person that you want to become? Mm -hmm. So, and this is actually funny because I remember somebody, it was a client of mine way back. You might remember uh, Mick and Ray. I think so, yeah. Ray was like yeah. a smaller little redhead girl. Mick yeah, yeah. was the, the guy that had the hip issue. Yeah, yeah. I went to dinner with a bunch of the great couple. <laughs> and uh, they used to always give me such good advice. They gave me this one piece of advice that said, like, write down five to ten things on a piece of paper that are your non-negotiables for the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, super specific. And I was like, <laughs> well, I'm never going to find anybody. <laughs> right. Sure enough, like. Shannon fit the criteria of all those. And I had that in my wallet for like two years, bro. <laughs> but I also do that. Uh, I used to write my intentions of the day. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was kind of aligned those same, same things. Like who is the person I want to be, not only for myself, but for my family. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write those down. Like my intentions for today are to be present or to listen better or to do these things that mm -hmm. I see as qualities and people that I look for. And then it keeps you aligned with what you're doing. And then also when somebody steps into my circle – I have that list in the back of my head and I can like basically check off like you're, you're not in my circle, dude. I got to want you in my circle. Well, and, and the funny thing about that is a lot of times, you know, people step into the circle and they weed themselves out. Yeah. Right. Um, and I see that every day, right. Where coaching clients are, you know what, like, man, my struggle is, you know, like my friends don't really want to hang out with a lot. Uh, you know, they, we used to hang out this many times. Now it's this. And it's almost, it's, it's, Again, is it a fear of they're afraid of what you're going to become and you're going to become, quote unquote, too good for them? Or is it their constant battle with themselves that every time they're around you, they question themselves mm. over and over and over again yeah. to where like, man, like almost like I don't want to say I'm not worthy. Right. But my life is just nowhere where it needs to be. Right? But that doesn't that doesn't mean that you should 100% step down, you know. Right. And, and that's why to me it's. If you're 100% comfortable with who you are and where you're heading, then, again, back to the original conversation of it doesn't matter what anybody's going to say, right? It doesn't matter. And if you're single, young and single, even better, right? Because you're literally, you can shape your future. Yeah, you're fresh slave. By doing everything right now. Yeah. Now, if you're in a relationship, the first step is the communication, right? To where, you know, if somebody comes to me, and says, man, I really want to coach with you. But it's like, oh, are you married? Yeah, I'm married. It's like, okay. After first couple of co calls, and they're just like, yeah, you know what? Like, I don't really want to tell my significant other that I'm getting coached. And it's just like, why? Why not? Yeah. Like, man, you're like, you're better. Than you're now, again, again, it comes down to there's a deeper feeling that they're having of how is my spouse going to feel if I'm trying to do this? Mm -hmm. Are they going to feel less? Are they going to feel intimidated? Right. Well, there is like a statistic on like divorce rates with like people who, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's like in a weight loss thing where people lose a bunch of weight and they end up getting motivated and they end up doing X, Y, Z. And mm -hmm. the, if the person doesn't try to improve themselves at all, then there's an issue there. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but the question there is like, who Does that, would be at fault? Yeah, exactly. Does that mean you shouldn't <laughs> try right. to be better? Exactly. No, I think that's super important. I think, I, I think allowing yourself to do it's kind of like the whole airplane thing right like putting your your mask on first right like just save yourself like focus on mm -hmm. you and i think your surrounding and you have to force yourself into those surroundings because i know for me like some of the people i talk to on a, a very frequent basis and actually have like real meaningful conversations with which a lot of especially i can speak for men aren't comfortable mm -mm. like you said a little bit ago like oh, i appreciate you like i remember feeling weird saying i appreciate you to another person mm -hmm. Like, it just felt weird to me. Or, like, I remember texting my brother, like, hey, man, like, I love you, dude. Like, thank you for everything. Why? You, what? Like, why are you texting? And I'm <laughs> yeah, like. What's going on? <laughs> like, the first, like, month of, like, me doing that to family and friends that are like, dude, what, you, what, what kind of shit are yeah. you on? And then eventually it was just, like, normal. But, like, the deep, meaningful conversations I have with a lot of people 
they're not people I've known uh, by accident. Like I didn't go to school with them or anything like that. It, it was literally people that like I forced myself into a coaching group mm-hmm. or to a seminar or I just popped in their DM and was like, man, like I relate to a lot of your shit. Like I think we would get along. Like it's I'm forcing that conversation and forcing that circle around me. And that's been a game changer for me over the years, man. Well, and I think it's because you were clear on who it is that you wanted to become. Yeah. Right. So again, it all goes back to that to where I'll be honest, like I struggle with that. Because in my mind, even like, again, the whole podcasting, right? People are like, well, I mean, you should reach out to this guy. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure like, you'd be great on his podcast or her podcast, stuff mm-hmm. like that. And to me, I, this, as positive as I am, this internal switch comes on of like, am I good enough to be on that podcast? Yeah. Right? And even though all these other people are like, man, of course. Right? Like you have so much to offer, blah, 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 whether it's business value or personal, whatever. And to me, that's a struggle. Right. So my vulnerable side is, okay, like how can I shut that down and actually reach out and say, Hey man, like, man, I'd love to be on your podcast. And if, and if you take it a step further, it's obviously people that you align with in a certain way, shape or form or what they believe in, or maybe what their podcast is about, um, to where you have to stop thinking about yourself and what the value is going to be from you stepping into that zone. Mm -hmm. Right. So with me, you know, Making those calls, it's not that I feel like I'm too good. It's really the fact of, like, am I worthy enough to be on that podcast? Like, yeah. w- like what can this guy offer? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think if you think about the value you're serving others, it makes that conversation a lot easier. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. even, like, I talk to a lot of people that are just – they're just afraid to put, push publish on an Instagram post. You right. know what I mean? They're right. just afraid to, like, put stuff out there. And like, how do you just pull the trigger all the time? I'm like, I'm really not worried about what the next trainer thinks or how many likes get. Like, I just know that what I'm putting in here is valuable to somebody going through X. Right. And as long as that person gets served, then it's a win. Mm-hmm. Then I'm then I'm good with it. And, and that makes it so much easier for me to be confident, just constantly posting, constantly recording podcasts because somebody's getting help from it. Mm-hmm. And that's all that matters. And, and I think to me, that's what's made it easier, right, with – the posting mm-hmm. and and the whole you know left, you know building out la tribu and what's coming with that is really not caring about and the funny thing here is if you ask anybody that really really knows me like they know that I don't care about what anybody says so that's the crazy thing is that I don't care like I really I'm going to do me what's good for me and my family and my friends and to really build the legacy for them so but then there comes a point where the same thing right like man, I should really post about this. I really feel like I need to post about this. Mm-hmm. And then for some reason, it just you just don't. And then you do post something, and all of a sudden, you might get one comment on it, right? Or one DM on it that's just, man, like I really need to hear that today. And that is like kind of like the, okay, right? Yeah. But now being careful not to post for that validation, right, yeah. is, is also like, Okay, man. Now my posting, so I so somebody can say like, man, I really appreciate your stuff or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it it most definitely is a way better conversation when you have that of as long as it reaches one person, then you know. For instance, the podcast podcast I did you know with you the first time, where even just like my nieces and nephews, like, man, we're so proud of you. Like, man, like you actually stepped out, and they give me a lot of ribbing because of I'm not the most techie guy, right? So, <laughs> so, but even that was like, man, cool. Like if I'm showing if my niece was just like, man, that's cool that you did that. Or I can't believe you're on a podcast. Right. Then I'll take it. Yeah. And, and if it helps even, you know, second person, then even better. That's one thing I was, it's actually funny. I was talking to Travis, uh, yesterday we left it and I was like, Andres needs to hire you because he's got to step up this like content <laughs> right. game. Cause I think about like, man, like the effect you're having and the amount of people you're already reaching and you haven't even, like tapped into like the full potential of that side of things, which is just wild to me Right. because I'm like so far into that realm because that's what I built my mm-hmm. like foundation on mm-hmm. of like marketing. Um, it's just like, to me, I'm like, man, like the, it would just be <laughs> insane. It would be insane. So right. like, uh, but, I, but I want to see this conversation towards like, um, i talk a lot about the four pillars and mm-hmm. like, I want to get your take on that because I think I want to say it's Keller Williams. Is he the one that wrote the one thing? And so. I've never, I don't think I've ever zeroed him in. Because even, you know, even with like our La Tribu checklist daily stuff, right? There's more than four yeah. um, that have to be done every day. So I think it'd be difficult for me to say, to narrow them down to four. 
because I'm so ingrained in just making sure that all those things are getting checked off where I know early on it was more of the faith. I could say faith, right? And, and, you know, family and work ethic. I would say that those were like the top three, you know, if I was just going to zone them in on something. And then over time it grew to the go giver, right? The giving back and, and the journaling. I actually didn't start journaling till probably about 11 years ago, 10 years ago. Um, and that was a game changer, right? So as far as the core four, if I'm going to steal that, um, I'd probably say family, faith, business, and self. I, mean, I, th- I think it's, it's cool because it, it's not like a catchy – because uh, there's another guy that has uh, family, faith, fitness, finance, and it's like all the <laughs> – Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> body being balanced business. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, it's like, yeah, which is yeah. cool. Like right, it's, right, right. It, and it's smart because yeah, it's catchy. You remember it. But it, it's – it's not about it sounding cool. It's about like what's actually important to you. Mm-hmm. And do you do you ever change these things at all depending on the individual? Like I just as far as like what they should be focusing on or is it almost always? No, it's almost because again, remember the whole backstory on a tribu is just I take it as, for instance, if, if I'm reaching out to a coach or to a mentor, it's because of what I believe in them, mm. right? Or what they're doing. They have something that I want. Um, so to me, when La Tribu started, it was more, obviously people were reaching out for, to me because of something that I offered, right? So to be 100% transparent, like if you're coming to get what I have, then this is what I have. And it's not for, it's, I mean, so it's not, that's why on the checklist, you know, it says the things that you have to do and then there's blank spaces. Those are the specific ones, right? But the non-negotiables are all the ones that are just there. Um, we'll specify some things, obviously, you know, like date night, but if somebody single doesn't have a girl, then obviously that doesn't apply. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't switch those up. The only one that is, I guess is tricky if you want to put it that way is the prayer, Mm -hmm. right? So that's either meditation or prayer and that's just opening it up for everybody. Stillness. Yeah. Yeah. So I meditate. There's times where I meditate. I don't pray. There's times where I pray. I'm, I pray more than I meditate. Um, but I fully believe in the power of both. Um, and it's really just having that quiet time, if you want to say that, that way. Well, one thing I've always told people, too, is like if we look at these different quadrants of your life that we're focusing on and we're basically talking about health, uh, both physically and mm-hmm. psychologically, um, family, relationships, spouse, business, and then what was the last one? Or is it just those three, basically? And faith. Faith. Yep. Um, so – within these, if one starts to be stressed out or fall or you, you neglect one, the other ones kind of start to deteriorate exactly. too. Right. Right. So isn't it, is it like, is, how are these synchronized together and how are you focusing on like, whether it's like break down the daily, weekly routine, kind of like what, I mean, you just gave it to me today, so I haven't really mm-hmm. got a chance to really look at it, but right, I'm stoked right. about it. The, the checklist and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, I have mine, uh, I've been doing, I was sending you pictures, of st- right. sticky notes, like <laughs> right. the go giver weekly was like a mm-hmm. really big one for me. Um, that makes me feel really good. Like, mm-hmm. and it's, and it's more than just like buying somebody a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Like it's like really trying to go that extra mile to right. just do something. Right. Um, a good example of that is I took my mother-in-law with us to San Diego. Perfect. Dude, she hasn't been on a vacation in like a decade, like wow. literally so long that she was like, could not like to almost to an awkward point of saying thank you too many times. I was like, <laughs> stop. Like, I'm right. so happy to bring you. Like you're getting right. to like hang out with your granddaughter and right. your daughter. Like there's no feeling that could replace that. Mm-mm. Right. And like, I think like that, like little added thing was like such a game changer to me, but, it, um, but it was all within the structure. Mm-hmm. So to me, you know, it, it's, it's funny. Cause originally, you know, when we start talking about, okay, for instance, exercise, right? Like you're going to exercise every day. And obviously, I mean, the benefits of that are common sense. Yeah. <laughs> right. We don't need to tell the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> they so know. exercise, um, you know, the journaling, right. Just having that conversation with yourself pretty much, right? Um, the prayer, the meditation, having that time of stillness to kind of just re- recenter yourself. Um, on, on the daily, it's also um, family time, whether it's with your kid, with your spouse, you know, the spouse touch, as we call it, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's just a short text message, it's a, you know, leave a sticky note in the morning. Um, clean in the kitchen. Clean, clean in the kitchen, exactly, right? Yeah. And, and it all depends on your love language yeah. or, or your spouse's love language, right? Um, so those things, the funny thing is whenever we start, 
with a with a new client, the first thing is always, well, how much do I journal? Yeah. How much do I exercise? How yeah. much do I pray? And and it's funny how it's a perfect example for you where it started off as, oh, well, I bought coffee for the guy behind me at Starbucks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then it grew to, now we're going to do this thing for TCM, right? We're, we're going to be feeding kids and this and that. And then now it leads to this. Mm -hmm. So to me, I've never had a structure of you have to start with this amount. Yeah. Just, just start. Well, and, and if you were at the very beginning, like, all right, there's a go-giver thing. I want you to start by donating 2,000 meals. I'd be like, wait, <laughs> right, what? Right. For who? What? Right. Yeah. Because everybody's different, yeah. right? And honestly, the on the go-giver aspect, just like even the fitness, right? Like somebody that hasn't worked out, they start working out, they might automatically fall in love with it, right? And now it leads them into like third, fourth, fifth level type fitness stuff yeah. where somebody is just happy to walk for 30 minutes a day. Yeah. To me, it doesn't matter. To me, it's... You're moving. One, you're moving, and two you're being intentional about your day, yeah. which the, that's where the daily checklist comes in to where th the same time where I don't care if you do it in the morning. I don't care if you do it at night, right? I don't care if you journal in the morning or it doesn't matter. We're going to now as time goes on, then we are going to start challenging to do a little bit more. Yeah. And that's just basic growth. I'm proud to say that the majority of the people that have started since the beginning, I haven't had to have that conversation of like, okay, well, you've been buying coffee for the person. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like everybody's doing their own thing where it's contagious. Like you want right. to yeah. do more. Yeah. One of the members just went to the Philippines, right. On vacation. And just there, he, I, one of the friends that he knew there or something like that, she had got information on, on this organization that helps buy uh, school supplies for kids. And he came back with, man, I got the information for them. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna set something up to where I'm doing something you know monthly with them and just giving back helping out like and again thank you for just even opening that door and it's like man perfect right where a month or two months before he was buying socks for homeless people and just walking around handing them yeah. out right so the the beautiful thing is through the conversations of sharing for instance what you're doing with other members and vice versa there's always this internal challenge of like I know I should be doing more and even furthermore the feeling you get of doing more yeah then it just comes for full circle to where it's almost like you know if you give more you're gonna get more i think it becomes second nature too mm -hmm. you know like uh i mean even actually just yesterday um somebody emailed me and they were struggling with training and i just gave them one of our hundred dollar ebook training programs for free like just like the way they emailed me our conversation i was like you know what take this is. do this for training for 12 weeks let me know if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. But I didn't ask for money. I didn't say mm -hmm. like, and by the way, if you upsell to nutrition coach, you <laughs> no, right, 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 right. off. <laughs> like, it's just right. like, you know, here. But like the reason I bring that up is that I have my like checklist of like every week I have one slot to check off with the right. go-giver, right? And last night I went to my board and was like, okay, strength training, like knocking off my stuff. And I looked at that and I thought about it and I was like, man, I haven't crossed off anything. But then I was like, well, I did this. Then I did this. Mm -hmm. I just took her to say, like, and I would just knocked off a bunch. And I was like, it's just second nature. I don't really have to do it. And I think a part of that, actually, it's like a really good quote. I love the quote that's on the bottom of that. I'm going to butcher it. But basically, mm -hmm. like, uh, accountability is the glue that holds everything together right. as far as, like, staying right. consistent with the stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the accountability of having a coach like you, being in that inner circle like we were talking about. And even to the point of, like, like that person didn't want to tell his wife they was getting coached. Right. Like, I'm always super open with that about Shannon because, dude, we were, we were driving to – uh, the super mall a few weeks back and I pulled up and she looks out and there's like this homeless guy and she was like, oh, I feel so bad. Oh, you haven't done your go-giver this week. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any cash on you? And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> so we gave him some money. There you go. But, but that's accountability. Right. And, and like, I wasn't like, oh, fuck. Right. Like it felt good. Right. Like it's yeah. five bucks. He needs it more than me. Right. right. Um, but and, I think, and, and the beauty thing is there like, again, and there'll be a point where your daughter's going to, catch up yeah on it, right and and i posted something about it on right around christmas time to where we were going to church and the, the kids showed up to church and they each had a little ziploc bag yeah and it was like oh it's for offering right because we know that the, i guess in their sunday school class they had told them that there's going to be a special offering for i think it's like women like getting help through like abuse and stuff like that mm -hmm. whatever so it was just like Oh, here's our essentially everything they had saved up till then in a Ziploc bag and to put in the in the offering bucket, wow. right? So those type of things are like perfect, right? Yeah, so it's so it off. exactly, and and that's where the importance of making sure that those things are done on a daily basis 
And look, let's be real, right? There's going to be faults. There's going to be bumps. I'm not expecting perfection, right? Um, because if I do sense that you're getting a little comfortable and you're checking everything off, then it's like, all right, let's like up the ante the next time. Yeah. And in that way, it's to where you feel, one, that you're constantly growing, right? And two, this full circle comes around of, okay, that's, that's the deeper meaning of what we're trying to do is just make better people. Mm -hmm. Not get people to, it's, for instance, with you with fitness, right? Like there's always this next thing that somebody can do to continuously feel like they're progressing mm -hmm. with what, whatever goal they're trying to get to. Yeah, um, which is a perfect segue because I, I want to bring up what we're going to be doing and then we can dive in some of these questions. But um, I'll let you explain like why you wanted to do this with me. But I'm super excited about it because it's, you know, like being a part of this, like I've, I've, I've felt reward or fulfillment. Like I just feel good being a part of it. And it's been like, um, like, how can I give back? How can I do more? How can I like help him do something? How can I be a part of it? Um, so me being able to step in and, and kind of help with the training and nutrition side of things is like so fucking cool to me. And it, and it really makes me feel like I'm giving back to the cause, um, while still helping my team grow and right. be able to work with more people. Right. Um, so I'm super excited about it. And I think that like one of the coolest parts is that it's almost like this all inclusive, like mm -hmm. if we really consider like life coaching, like it really is like, I mean, what aren't you helping with at mm -hmm. this point? Like besides the fact, the shit that the person has to do because they have to do the work, right. but the fact that we can facilitate a, a mentoring program that's like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to mentor and coach you, but I also have a nutritionist on the team. Basically I have a training system on the team already. Like you'll get a login, you get all this stuff. Everything's done for you. Um, so for the listeners, like the tailored trainer, our nutrition coaching program is going to be integrated into La Tribu so that his clients, as they go through this, like all encompassing coaching program can literally get an all encompassing right. program. Yeah. So for me, you know, going back to one of the original questions that, that comes up every time is, you know, well, I went to the gym. It's like, okay, well, what'd you do? Well, either I downloaded, <laughs> you know, I went into Men's Health magazine yeah. or something and got like the, the monthly workout or whatever. And connecting that conversation to, are we real, do we really have a tracking system of growth, mm -hmm. right? Because this is what it's all about. Again, it's not just about getting on a weekly call and just, you know, and, and let's see what happens, yeah. right? It's more of like, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? Where, where are we going? And in all aspects, right? So with fitness, having those conversations, you know, originally the conversation was like, well, I'll get a true coach account, right? And, yeah. and then you just kind of handle that. And taking a step back, you know, going to the big picture of like handing it off to the capable hands, right? And again, taking stuff away from my plate, right? That I'm not good at, right? That I don't really know the ins and outs about. So to me, it was, it was honestly an, an easy conversation to have of if I want my clients to get the best, right? Then I'm going to go out and get the best. Yeah. Now, the fact that it was, it's a seamless transition. Cause I mean, you already have that. Yeah. Right. Like, so that was a, a no brainer, right? It's like, okay, how do I get, like, I'm trying to make it easier for my clients to be able to accomplish all these goals that they have. Right. And like you said, obviously they still have to do the, the daily stuff. They still got to do the work. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. you know, that, that's the whole point, but how can we connect them to the experts and doing this is, Again, I, I have a feeling it's going to be a game changer for my clients on the fitness side of it, the nutrition side of it, because that's always one of the biggest hiccup they have, right? It's like, well, yeah, I went to the gym, but like there is no plan I'm really following. There is. So already that one section of the stuff that, that we're focusing on isn't conditioned like everything else. Yeah. And like you said, if one of them falls off, everything else kind of starts sliding off. Now, in nutrition and, and fitness, you know, Again, the listeners will know about this where, like, if you have a bad meal, you knew you weren't supposed to have it, your whole day is just ruined, right? Your, your, your thoughts go negatively about yourself. You're not producing at work. You get home, you're not producing at home, yeah. right? Cause, so, to me, yes, the psychological side of it is important, but even more so, something like that that can literally just trigger everything off yeah. to a negative site, right? So, so, yeah, so to me, I'm excited um, we've already, you know, done a couple of clients that, that have, have kind of rolled over and, and they're pumped about it. And I mean, the ease of literally just 
clicking on the app and your workouts there, yeah. you know, and going to, you know, you don't know the exercise, click on it. Cause that was the other thing too. When I started telling my clients about it, they were like, yeah, man, but like, we're like beginners. Yeah. Right. So, and it's like, look, like everything's going to be, I mean, the name says it, it's tailored, right. It's going to be specific to where you're at. And also there's going to be a certain progression to it. And the nutrition aspect of it is money because that's also one of the daily things, right. Is yeah. to make sure that you're eating quote unquote healthy. Right. And for everybody, it's a different starting point. So I think that's the, the biggest benefit of, of this collaboration is that you have the knowledge, the capacity to handle anybody. Yeah. Whether you're you've never changed your life, you've never really even focused on your nutrition, um, because I really fully think that all these things together, that's what will propel somebody to just keep progressing and then just be the better version of themselves that they know they can be. They just don't know how to get there. I used to always say, man, your body is the fastest path to power. And, mm -hmm. and I don't mean that the mindset, the business, the, like all that stuff's super important. But if you neglect your health, like your, your brain isn't going to work on the same right. capacity. If you don't like the way you look, if you, if you're in pain from the way you move, if you can't get on the, like, I remember with my knee, one of the like big trigger points was not that I had a bum knee or that I couldn't like do a full range of motion squat or thing. It was literally that I couldn't kneel down on the ground with Blakely without mm -hmm. being a knee pain. And then <laughs> right. I got surgery and fixed it and everything's better now. But like if, if you're not working on these things, everything else in your life isn't going to progress and mm -hmm. it's not going to be better. Right. right. And I think that's what's so cool about it. And I'm excited too because like I know – I mean I've done – so many different like mentoring and life coaching stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I've never heard of anybody doing something like this where it's like, like, Hey, here's the coaching program. This is all the value, blah, blah, blah. And I've told you multiple times, right. like, dude, you, you're worth way more. So <laughs> it's like the fact that there's so much value already inside of what you're getting that, and that's like a lot because I, I literally am like, dude, I would pay you more. Like, and the fact, <laughs> right. like I don't want him to take my money, but <laughs> the, the point is, is there's so much value inside to now be able to say like, all right, cool. We're going to get started. Oh, by the way, do you need help with nutrition? I have a nutritionist for you. It's not extra. Like it's just right, right. included in what we do. Right. We have the tailored trainer. It's a system. It gives you videos, gives you programming. The progression key is the biggest. Instead mm -hmm. of just going to the gym and doing the same shit over and over again, mm -hmm. it's basically an, an algorithm that forces you. Like let right. me do the periodization for you. Like it yep. forces you to progress. Um, so the fact that this is all like encompassed is so cool. So I'm just going to do like a huge uh, like call to action shout out for you because we have this platform and you know, like a lot of people listening know that like I'm a trainer, I'm a nutritionist. Like mm -hmm. that's my thing. I don't business coach. The extent of business coaching I do is um, that I host these events with Jason Phillips, the right. one I was just at. Right. And I educate live and I give a ton of value and there's like some some stuff in between that I do. But it's it's not really coaching on that level, um, which is why I hired you and mm -hmm. like why you're in my life. So for people listening, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're uh, an executive, if you're somebody that works for somebody else or if you're somebody that needs accountability and wants to level up every area of your life and you just want to grow and develop. And I think like that's the big thing with your coaching. It's, it's really like personal development coaching. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who – almost just don't know where to start. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, of course I want to be better, but what the fuck do right. I do? What do I read? Who do I listen to? Mm -hmm. What do I write? How do I journal? Like, that's why this is a thing. That's right. why you do this. So if there's people listening and, and uh, what's your email? So I guess that's the best way. Cause you like, you, you don't have like a right. click here. And <laughs> well, if, I mean, if you go to the, if you go to the website, Latribu oh, Coach, yeah, latribucoach.com or you can email me at Andres, A-N-D-R-E-S at Latribu coach.com cool i'll put all that in the show notes guys yep. and if you guys are interested obviously click there we're going to dive into some questions but i wanted to put that out there and make sure that people because there's a lot of entrepreneurs um and there's a lot of people who are like very into coaching mm -hmm. hence why i mean i'm like this right, podcast right. <laughs> but uh that i think would be super interested and in, in really benefit Perfect. from what you do so i think it's important um the other thing i'm gonna i'm gonna just this completely off topic but it always you don't have like a, a thick accent right but Anytime you say like a Spanish word, <laughs> it kicks in. I gotta say, I gotta it's say so the funny. way you're supposed to say it. It makes me feel like I'm I'm incorrectly pronouncing your name, La Tribute. Like right. it's so funny, man. Uh, it, it you got like that. It's like that suave like comes on. Yeah, it's just everybody says that. it's like why why do you have to add what they say? Why you gotta make it so spicy? I'm like that's just that's the way you say it. That's <laughs> like, literally that's how the it's... way that was meant to be said. Oh, that's hilarious. All right, uh, let's let's get on to so we got. Samuel Lee, 93, what is his why? As in, he who has a why can bear any how. What keeps him moving forward? 
my why is just leaving a legacy, right? And leaving a legacy for not myself, not and, and honestly, not even my kids, really deeper than that, right? My nieces, my nephews, their generation to come after that. Um, because I've seen the importance of the generations before me and kind of what they taught me. And it's always been a crazy conversation when I have, when I have this with people is, is cause there was never growing up. It was rare to hear about coaches mm -hmm. and, you know, accountability coaches. I mean, that's wasn't even a thing. Yeah. Um, so to me, it was always just really being intentional about how can I grow today? Whether I'm talking to one of my professors at the time, whether I'm talking to, a, f a buddy of mine whose dad owns a restaurant or whatever that is. It's just how, how do I build more so I can give back more? And really that's, that's the legacy. So my why is, is really broad if you want to put it in, like if you were going to break it down into every single context that I'm involved with, but overall it's just, just leaving a legacy for, for my kids' kids, if you want yeah. to put it that way. I have a very similar thing. I think uh, one of the things I put on my slides uh, on day one was uh, legacy, like in all caps, mm -hmm. and then it had like the like greater than, mm -hmm. um, which I was implying is over, and then it had income right. in like lower caps, because I was at a business event and all these people want to know like how do I grow my business, how do mm -hmm. I make more money, and all I was talking about was how to deliver more value, mm -hmm. and like my whole it's actually really cool. Like day one was all about like this is where it starts. Day two was all like application. Mm -hmm. So day two I like got really tactical of like content. How do you like, uh, how you, uh, interpret your message. Okay. How do you like deliver that into content? How do you spread that content out? How do you outsource? Like really, really tactical. But day one was all like, just give, just give, right. just give, stop asking questions, stop worrying about money, stop mm -hmm. worrying about anything. Just give value, give value, give value. Um, and I think like that comes back to like the same thing for me and my why is like that, that legacy and knowing that, and this sounds really weird, but I think of people in history that nobody will ever forget. Right. right. Or even people in my life, like I have, I've had situations when I was 13, 15, 18 of like interactions or help that I've gotten for people that I'll never forget that person and mm -hmm. what they did for me. Yet there's billions and billions and billions of people who are always forgotten. Mm -hmm. Like that's a scary and kind of morbid thing to think about. Right. But like that drives me to be like, let me be that one out of a billion right. that like people will remember for a good reason. Well, I always use the example of, for instance, you know, the whole money conversation, right? People are like, oh, well, there's got to be money behind it. And it's like, yeah, there is. There yeah. Obviously, there has to be. You've got, you know, you got to have money to do stuff. But in the bigger scheme is, like, once you pass away, right? Like, and again, there's tons of quotes and tons of book, books being written about it. Like, whatever you have in the bank doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? So I use, for instance, Paul Allen as a perfect example, right? Like, I mean, he passed away and well, one of the richest guys and had – but he – did leave a legacy with all the charity work he was doing. Yeah. Right. So with, for instance, with him, if he was just all about the money, he passes away and we're not talking about Paul on right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, and it's not really to, to talk about like the person, but more so of all the people that are going to be affected by what he left or what he yeah. built before, before his time was up. Yeah. And I think knowing why you want to make more money is helpful too, because some people, want money for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. they want to i mean we've all been there i'm sure right. like where you like get a nice ass car mm -hmm. and, you, and you buy some fancy watches and you like you think it's gonna like fulfill right, you right. and it doesn't but right. i think once you i know for me like once i realize like okay there is like you know i don't do this for money but i know that if i do this right and i do it at scale i will make more money which allows me to do more which allows me to help more which allows me to hire coaches mm -hmm. to have their dream job right. hire travis so he can have his dream job right. and like now, like making money has a purpose behind it. So like, right. I do want more money, but it's so I can fuel all these other people right. and create this. And, and I think that deep conversation or that deep question of like, what's behind it, right. Mm -hmm. Is, is, is huge. And there's, you know, one of the guys that I follow, he's a big influence. His name is uh, Daniel Habib. And he was asked a question one time cause he was driving around. I think he was driving around like in a Bentley or something like that. Right. And everybody was like, cause he does talk about being humble and being hardworking and all that. And somebody asked him and they said, they made a comment of, like, where's the humbleness, right? And in short answer, he put, the humbleness is in your heart, mm. right? So again, like, the making money isn't a bad thing. Like, don't get me wrong, right? And, and believe me, like, if you want to make money to have a really big house, even though you don't need it, man, power to you, right? But, like, what are you doing alongside that to balance that out, yeah. right? And 
there will be people that, you know, will make a lot of money, pass away, don't do anything good for anybody. And like, that's cool, man. That's your thing. Right. So to me, that's why pushing La Tribu has always been a difficult thing because it's it's always this conversation of like people that are coming to La Tribu or because they want they want to be better and they want to match up to those core values. Mm hmm. Right. Somebody that doesn't want to give back is not going to be a part of Latribu. Yeah. Right. And I don't care how much you're willing to pay me. It's yeah. just it's not going to happen. <laughs> right. So there's always a time and a place for everybody. If your road is that way and you don't want to give back to anybody. Cool, man. Like if that makes you happy. Perfect. Yeah. There's nothing I can say about that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with like because even that guy driving around the Bentley, like he can be the most humble person giving a ton. Mm -hmm. But if he likes cars, yeah. like that's one thing. That's so like for, thing. for me, like. I won't spend tons of money on like name brand clothes. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care about a lot of stuff like that, but I love cars. Right. But I, nobody knows the cars I've driven because I don't fucking flaunt right. them right. on Instagram. Right. Cause it's not about that. Like for you, it's literally like me inside that car is like, that's cool. And like part of it is like my dad was, uh, he's been in the car and oil industry his whole life. So I grew up around hot rods yeah, yeah. and muscle cars. Like, so to so me, it's like, that. I love fucking cars. So like right. some people are like, you spent how much on right. your car like payment and your rims? And I'm like, yeah, but, <laughs> but it's I mine. feel so good. <laughs> right. And also it was connected to a reward. Yeah. Right? So that's a whole, yeah. Uh, yeah. again, so remember it's, it's a part of a plan yeah. and it's a part of a plan that's, that has a way bigger picture at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. I think that's actually a really good point too, is like people will, we've talked about this a little bit, like have goals set and don't have any type of reward at the right. end of it. So they just go from goal. And I, I went through this position where I was like constantly setting the next goal mm -hmm. and I was never satisfied or appreciative of myself and the hard work until somebody was like, dope. Okay. So here's your 90 day goal. What are you going to do at the end of it? I was mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean? What are you going to buy? What, what are you going to reward yourself with? Yeah. And it was like, Oh shit. Okay. So like one time I took Shannon on a trip and I didn't tell her until like, right. I knew I was going to hit the goal. <laughs> <laughs> so then I told her, I was like, Hey, we're going on a trip a few weeks. Um, my truck, mm -hmm. um, this last one was, uh, the tires and the wheels and stuff like that. And like, I don't know if you saw it, but it yeah, looks, it looks good, <laughs> way bigger, <laughs> but stuff like that. Like, like it actually helps you like stay motivated and appreciate right. yourself and keep yeah. going. Vinny G underscore CB practical tips for how to achieve a better work slash life balance without getting no sleep. Without getting no sleep? Yeah, so I guess he's just like, and, and granted, these are Instagram, so right, it's right, like right. you only get so much space to ask questions. <laughs> right, right. And he did like a LOL emoji. So I'm assuming he's like just saying like, how do you be successful and have balance without like getting no sleep? You know what I mean? And this right. is a conversation I had with some people at mm -hmm. the event too. Was I was like talking about this stuff and they asked me about my journey and they were like, well, like you preach balance, but you also went through a three-year period of time where you were working from basically when you woke up till 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well... You know, I woke up and I worked on my online business and then I went to the gym and I trained people till 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. So there was a period of time with right. that. Oh, yeah. But I think I always knew, even before I met Shannon, like I want to have a house, family, wife, balanced. Right. I want to eat dinner with my family right. every day at five. So I knew it would come. Right. Right. So I think sometimes there is value in saying like right now you might not have balance, especially for young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Um, because I don't think there is any like successful entrepreneur that has a ton of free time right. and has a ton of balance that has just always been that way. It right. just came to them that right. way. You know what I mean? There's always a grind period. Mm -hmm. I think to me, the, the, the simple way to put it is, is having that tracker, right? The progression tracker, yeah. right? Is to where, and, and, and I'm hundred percent with you where there will be times where you're going to sacrifice something, right? You're going to sacrifice time. You're going to sacrifice money. You're going to sacrifice relationships. But is that a part of a goal? And I think the, the, the biggest problem with people is that they go through these time periods, right? But because they didn't have a plan in place, when that 90 days is up, they're not really where they want to be. So they consider that 90 days a failure. Mm. Right? So now it's like, well, man, I've been working 20 hours a day for the last year and I'm not where I want to be at. It's like, well, first question, where do you want to be at? Too, yeah. Okay, what did you do on a monthly, break it down to a weekly, break it down to a daily basis to make sure you got there? Oh, well, I didn't really have anything. Well, there you go. Yeah. So the bigger conversation is what are you trying to get to? Who you want to become? You know, what, what level do you want to be at? And breaking that down and being aware of the fact that, you know what, man, this next 30 days is going to be tough, right? I might give up some sleep. Okay. But at least I know that the next 30 days, not only am I going to get that sleep back, but I'm going to be 
closer to where I want to be. I think it's so like I, I love like when I first started with you that you had so much uh, you held so much value inside of tracking this stuff because mm-hmm. like I'll talk to people and it's like oh like you know like I really want to get stronger and, and I want to lose some weight like oh, okay cool like what, what does your diet look like oh, I don't know what do right. you do in the gym I, I don't know I just do it I'm like <laughs> right. so you have no data mm-hmm. and there's no way for us to like articulate how to right. improve like right. Numbers don't lie. Right. So like having a scoring system, having a tracking system is so important. And I also think that like you, you briefly mentioned just like planning. And I think understanding what you want and writing that down so that you can work towards it. Because right. like I know even for me that it was like, like I want to get off at 5 p.m. every day, eat dinner, not do shit for the rest of the day. Like that was my thing. And I looked at my life and was like, I can't do that right now. But I know if I keep doing X, Y, Z and I keep building here and I keep growing here, I'll get to that point. Right. And there's no Tim Ferriss four hour work week. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, unless you like create like, a, like if you create something that goes on Shark Tank and you're right. just collecting dough, like that's different. But point being is like most people who have meaningful careers, like there's hours of work involved. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. just part of it. And I think that if you can do that, you can, you can structure the rest of your day and week to be way more productive because right. for me like once i knew okay 5 p.m i want to do this 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 i know exactly what time i have to wake up what i have to do in the morning how long that's going to take how long like my marketing's going to take and then all the things that don't fall within that how do i outsource so other people can help me do that right i'll invest in other people so they can help me grow and stay within like my life boundaries right. but a lot of people don't even have those life boundaries but but for a perfect example is right there where you said i want to be home by five yeah right okay if you stayed here till 10 you'd make more money, but you'd sacrifice your time. Yeah. Right. So there's always going to be these. And again, the, in the progression, in the tracking, you have to have these kind of stops or stop signs or however you want to put it to where you ask yourself a question about continuing. Right. So for instance, with you, if right now you were to say, well, either I stop at five, go home and spend time with my family, or I stay here and make more money right now, you've made the decision like, man, family time is way more important than money. There might be a time where, and for these next three months, I'm going to have to sacrifice my family time. Yeah. But again, because it's a part of a goal that you're trying to get to. And the, the biggest misconception is, you know, and especially with young people, and I, and, and I have this, this, this conversation with them a lot, is, you know, they're 22, 23, and there's this expectation that they should be way more than where they're at yeah. without having the tools, right? So with me, it's almost like, has anybody ever talked to you about accountability and tracking and all well, no, then don't knock yourself for it. Yeah. Cause you had no idea it was, you know, nobody's ever showed you the way. Now, if somebody showed you the way and you still ignore it, then obviously that's on you. But if you're 22, 23 and you haven't had that, whether it was shown to you or as an example, then it's not really your fault. Right. But like everything, the time is now to start. Yeah. Right? So the, the big picture there is just understanding that you're not, you're not going to be able to make significant growth or significant impact without tracking. Yeah. There's just, and if you do, I always ask people, right? And because uh, I get this too, like, well, I'm successful. It's like, yeah, but how much more successful would you be? Or how much shorter of a time frame would it have taken you to be this successful yeah. if you would have started from the beginning, right? Yeah. So there's always, always going to be questions. There's always going to be other ways of looking at it. But like you said, numbers don't lie. It's proven with anything, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. That if you don't have a tangible number of the time that you put in and what that gave you, then you don't know how to adjust for the next period of time. Yep. I love that. Uh, in the nutrition world, I always say, uh, like, there's no uh, dietary adjustment that can fix lack of consistency. Right. And, and this is what it is. Exactly. It's like, somebody's like, okay, well, can you adjust my macros? Cause I like, I'm not seeing results. I'm like, well, no, because you haven't hit your macros in four weeks. Right. So <laughs> any adjustment yeah. I make is inaccurate anyway. Right. right, right? right. So I think it, it, it does apply to everything. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, oh, that's a good one. Uh, shift human performance said, how do you get over imposter syndrome? I think that's a common thing, it's, it's, but it's common. not a lot of people will open up and ask about it. So I'm glad that they did. I think, I think for me, it, it goes back to like, I know who I am. Mm. Right. And the sooner you can find that, I mean, obviously the better. Right. So conversations with, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bring, you know, my niece into this, my niece, Lauren and shout out to Lauren, but she's in Bible college. Right. So with her, you know, she grew up and 
in, in, in a religion that I grew up in, right, that was quote-unquote strict, right? And very easy, easily could she have fallen into the norm, right? Which is, and I'll give you again, a brief example. You know, she doesn't wear pants. She doesn't cut her hair. She doesn't wear makeup, doesn't wear jewelry. Mm. And that's her belief because she knows that that's who she is. So now, fast forward, you know, she's in college. Still the same exact belief that she knew she was at 13 or 14, which to me is powerful because she went through middle school, through high school, mm-hmm. right? To where it would have been actually normal for her to fall into that, the, the, the norm, I guess, if you want to say yeah. it, right? To start wearing pants and all that. So to me, it's whenever I talk to young people, it's like, man, like, like first question, do you know who you are and who you want to be? Like deep down, really, right? Like, or are you going by what society says or what your friends say, what your circle, circle says? And a lot of time, I think people get, get it twisted to where it doesn't mean that you have to completely isolate yourself from those situations. I think people isolate themselves from the situations because of the fear that they might fall into the imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. right? So to me, I'll admit it, right? There was times growing up where I, I did it because it was almost, to me, it, it was just a simple correlation of that guy's got what I want. So I'm going to have to do exactly what that guy's doing, right? Now, with time, there was always the conversation of, and like, I don't want to do everything he's doing. Yeah. Right? So you pick and choose, but at the end of the day, I think life opens up a lot of opportunities for you if you continuously try and grow and push yourself to grow. Put yourself in those different positions to really see if 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 who you think you are is really who you are. I yeah. guess if, if that answers it. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't even know if I have anything to add to that. I would I would agree hundred percent. I think it's obviously finding comfort in who you are, but mm-hmm. I think how you do that is is somewhat different to everybody, but it, it comes with kind of doing a lot of everything we're saying today right. is really just doing the work, journaling, thinking, um, being okay with how you look, how you dress, mm-hmm. what you like to listen to. Uh, uh, we were at dinner on Saturday night, and we were having like a big music conversation, and this one girl finally looked over and goes, I am so shocked by you. And I was like... <laughs> We can, listen, we can make a plan for the next 30 days to transition into what you really should be doing. Yeah. Right. And it's like, and through conversation, it was like, you know what, man, you're right. It's like, <laughs> right. So it was there. It's been there for five or six years. And that almost goes back to fitting in the mold. You, you're almost like programmed to just fit in the mold and do what's comfortable and stay in your current lane because it's scary to step outside of that and do something new and, and actually and follow what you're And the people to do. around you yeah. don't understand why you would be doing that. Yeah. And you and I talked about it, right? When people, when you were going to do this. Yeah. I think even, I think Travis's dad was like, yeah, it's not yeah. going to work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So you could have easily been like, yeah, you know what? Like, I'm not doing that. Right. But, yeah. but you were true to yourself. You knew what you wanted to do. And let's be real. You can, you could have come out and done this and f- fell flat on your face. But like you said, you'd be back at Rite Aid if, if need be. Yeah, worst case. Right? And I tell people this all the time. It's like, man, like when, when your why is so powerful and you know who you are, and I've said this even myself, if I were to lose everything tomorrow, everything, you, you'd drive by the nearest McDonald's to my house and I'd be working there. Because I'm, I'm going to do what I got to do. Yeah. Right? Now, I'm not going to stay there. <laughs> right? Yeah. In, in three months, I'll probably be managing the place. But – that's just the philosophy that you have to have. It's yeah. like, man, like whatever has to be done, I'm going to do whatever's yeah. necessary. I love that. <laughs> nutrition, nutrition, definitely not for you. <laughs> definitely not. Caroline Mellisfit, how do you know if you are too scared to do a career or if you just don't want to do it? That's kind of like, sounds like it's related to what you were just talking right, about, right. that example. Right. I think, again, do you enjoy it? Mm. Everything, everything is going to come based off of your own happiness. You're not going to be able to make somebody happy if you're not happy, right? So this whole conversation of like trying to find myself and, and well, now i got to make a decision, obviously, for my family as well, but it all trickles down, right? And, yes, they're, again, the whole, the, talking about sacrificing something. If I were to tell – if you were to tell Shannon right now, you know what? Like, I'm just – I'm not even happy doing this anymore. So I'm going to go and – I don't know, work construction. I don't know, right? More than likely, first you'd be like, "Do you do you have a plan?" <laughs> first of all, right? Are we going to be okay? But I think at the end of the day, she man, whatever makes you happy. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So 
and not what I'm going to say and what Travis is going to say, whatever, but it, the man, that's whatever makes you happy is going to trickle down. So the easiest way is, would you be happy doing that day in day out? Sometimes, you know, people come back with the question of, well, you really won't know until you actually do it. Very true. Right. But again, if you have a plan, let's try it out. There's always, there's always going to be something to fall back on. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Right. So this whole conversation of I'm scared, it's, it's, you really have to ask, like, what is you're scared of? Is you're scared of failing? Because if you're scared of failing, then, man, newsflash. Like, failing is easier it, than regret. Exactly, right? So, or is it you're afraid of what other people are going to say? Yeah, I was going to say, like, I think one of the big problems is with social media and all this mm-hmm. stuff that it's you have so many eyes on you that you're so worried about what other people will think if you make a decision because mm-hmm. people will see, like, if you fail – and people are wondering, like, why you failed because they're watching your Instagram. Right. They saw you doing that thing. It's like it, I always tell people, sit down and journal, like, your perfect day, perfect life, perfect job, perfect everything you want to do. And do so without concerning yourself of the thoughts of other individuals. Don't worry about what your family will think, what your friends will think, what uh, your coworkers will think if you leave the current job. Like, just remove social media. Remove all other eyes and just focus on you for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the people who are really close, like you said, like Shannon, for example, she's going to follow me no matter what because she loves me and that's all that matters. So, like, the people in your life that actually care and are meaningful, like, they're not going to judge you anyway. But I think you have to remove all that. Well, not only that, but it's – Again, the, the deeper question is, do you even know who those people are? Yeah. Right? To really say, because honestly, it could be one person that if you really nail it down, that's the only person you really should be caring about who what's going to say. Yeah. Like for with me, right? It's my wife. Yeah, me too. And it's the same thing. Like she'll follow me. She has followed me through all these, you know, like different businesses and now I'm doing this. And, and I think the awesome thing was when I started doing La Tribu, like on an actual like official thing. She noticed it and almost like this is what you should have been doing this whole time. Yeah. Right. But she also understood that I had all these other things that I wanted to knock out to make sure that this could be fulfilled. That's and I think that's like two things on that. Number one, I think that's a really cool thing because like when when I saw you post and I immediately hit you up, like I remember telling Shane, like, how is he just now doing this? Like I literally was the first thing I said, like finally. Right. And I jumped on it. But (laughs) I think that's a really cool thing because it's so telling of like like your purpose behind it. But I also think it's cool to hear like the patience that went behind that. Because mm-hmm. even like I was talking to people this weekend of like what it takes to, to, to have all this shit and have a business like this. And it's like, well, and I have a slideshow that I do on my presentation that goes through from 2011 until the present day of like all the years of content. Right. And some of it was like cringing. I was like, <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> right. But the point is, is like I had to lay that foundation and it took time of building this and working with these people and collaborating here and traveling here and learning mm-hmm. this until I could get in a position where it's like, okay, now we're ready. Mm-hmm. But I always knew what the thing was mm-hmm. and I always knew what I wanted to do. It just, you, you have to be able to be patient in order to get there. And, and to me, you know, I think it came, well, I know it came full circle from early on where it was like, I just want to get back. I want to mm. get back. I want to get back. And then life took me through this journey of knowing that I, at, at, at the end of the day, I wanted to give back. Yeah. When I die, I want to die giving back. So it took me through this journey of, like, okay, now it's time to fulfill this. And I think it's two part one because that journey taught me a lot of what I talk about, <laughs> right? And it put me in a position to where I could talk about certain things and actually have quote unquote influence. Um, but at the same time, like if I, if I would have started doing it at 21 or 22 or 23, you know, when I f- found my why of giving back, would it have, would I have been able to give the same advice? Right. Uh, I, I mean, I could have taken somebody through some type of accountability, yeah. but I, at that point I didn't even have what I have now as far as yeah. like the checklist and all that. So I think everything, everybody wants everything a lot faster. Right. And they want, you know, they, they want to find their why a lot faster. They think that it's, there's a certain time frame where you, you're supposed to have it. And I, I honestly, I can't stress enough to where it's like, man, just, just live, do what you want to do. What makes you happy day in and day out. And it's, it'll come to you. Yeah. The rest will fall in place. It'll fall in place. Yeah. Uh, Coach.alex.e. I don't really know what he means by this, but we'll see what <laughs> comes of it. What is your favorite place? So I don't know what context that lives What's in. What's my but favorite place? <laughs> I, I mean, I guess we could uh, – to travel or like <laughs> your, your favorite place in general uh, to be wow. at. I'll say – uh, my favorite place to be at is 
on the right side of my L-shaped couch. <laughs> 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 and the reason I say that is because there's like a certain way that I put my feet up. And that's just like and it's to just me. Right there. It's right there. And that's like that's where me and Shannon like every night after Blake goes down, she goes upstairs. I like clean up the downstairs, go shower, get everything. And then it's like, oh. like I remember last night after traveling, like the first day of really being home and like grounded, I was like, oh, I love this place. This feels good. This feels good. <laughs> and it's a place that I never work. Like I don't work on the couch. Right. So it's like that's like home. That's right. my favorite place. I don't know where my favorite place to travel I think, is. I mean, I think to take kind of your lead on it is really just being around my my entire family. Right. And we, we've we've been fortunate enough, like they were up here for last Thanksgiving, you know, my brother, my sister, their kids, my parents were up here. And even if it was just hanging out in the living room watching mm -hmm. office reruns or something, right? It was just it's just the sense of happiness, joy, gratitude, just kind of subconsciously is just there. Yeah. So for me I, I would say anywhere Really anywhere with my family. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I think uh, like everything I think of is the same thing. Yep, like I yep. think of like uh, like times at my grandma's house too because that's where everybody gathers right. to do big dinners and shit like that. We always joke with her and say like you got to be Italian. Like there's no way. Because <laughs> we're not. We're Irish. But, right. But the way she cooks and the way she gathers everybody and makes everybody eat and like all the way she like the type of food she cooks it's like you're definitely Italian. Yeah. But. Maybe. All right. Um, Carmen Alessa. Every time she asks a question, I always think of Carmen Electra. <laughs> How to have time. That was like one of the hottest girls when I was growing up. Carmen Electra. <laughs> Carmen Electra. Yeah. That was, was even she like, on a, like a MTV show or something like that. Uh, what was she I on? know she was married to the, that one rock star and uh, the drummer of Jane's addiction, but I can't remember. Or no, not the drummer. I think he's a singer. Pamela Anderson was dairy, married to the drummer of Motley Crue. Tommy, uh, Tommy Lee or Tommy Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Pamela Anderson was in that, that period of time, too. But I, I actually think I had a poster of Carmen Did Electra wow. on my wall when I was, like, like 13 or 14. <laughs> Shit. I don't know why my parents let me have that. Anyway. Um, how to have time for a relationship when being a hard, working, hard worker and fitness enthusiast? Hmm. You got to designate the time. Yeah, I think that goes back to that one question we were talking about with just finding balance. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly think that it's something that I wouldn't go as far as saying like you have to be intentional, and but you know, I've had this conversation one too many times recently where I just haven't like I haven't found anybody, I haven't found anybody, I haven't found. Anybody. It's like, well, what are you doing to find somebody, right? Yeah. Like, are you are you just at home every day and you go to work and? Like you, you, I think there is something to be said as far as like, you have to put yourself in a position, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying like, go to the bar every night and this and that, but you really have to put yourself in a position. For instance, if you're a church goer, then just go to church, right? And, and have the conversation to where with yourself of why is it that you need somebody right now? Yeah. Right? Or, or why do you feel that? Is it again, because everybody else around you has somebody? Well, and that's and, one of those cheesy things of like, like, don't look for love. Love will find you. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but it's pretty damn true. I, I, I mean, like, actually, he talked about it. You probably remember at my wedding, he talked yep. about it with, like, Shannon. Like, I remember, like, going on dates with, with girls and finally just being like, fuck this. This is just, like, I got to stop looking. Right. And then guess that who happens. pops up? Yep. Shannon. Yep. And then now I'm married and have a kid. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. <laughs> But I think that, like, that saying is, is as cheesy as it is, like, I, I really think that's, like, I, I personally, like, my take on it would be, like, work on yourself, work on your business, find your passion, find your why, all mm -hmm. the things we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Just do that shit, and most likely that, those things will end up putting you in a position where right. you attract a certain person, or you're in a place. Like, I know friends in my industry who are dating other people in the industry because they went to a, an event right. and we we're all there and they met somebody and now right. it's like the love of their life, right. but it's only because they were pursuing their own happiness. Exactly. And also to add to that is this misconception of because, you know, she's a hard worker in fitness and all that, do I have to find somebody in fitness? Yeah. Right. And I think there's a lot put a lot of weight put on that statement of like, well, for this to work, they have to be, and it's like, not at all, not at all, yeah. like at all, at all, right? At, and that's actually something me and Shannon talked about originally because it was almost like a, like a, a timid thought of hers, mm -hmm. like, well, I'm not into like that stuff like you are. And I was like, that's why I love you right. because I've dated people right. that were just as into it as me. And it just, it's just clashing. Like this is mm -hmm. actually like, you're the yin to my yang. You make me normal at times. Like right. this is perfect. Well, and then, but 
along with that is also finding somebody that's understanding. Yeah, it right? supports it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And actually, the, I, I, was, I think it was in uh, – it was either the book, which is going to re- relate to the next question because the next question is um, from Jiska Tabot book recommendations, like what books have influenced you? And uh, it was either Crucial Conversations or The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People basically was talking about different people like different things and you have to understand that they like blank just like you like blank. So like for me, like like I like tracking macros and periodizing Mm -hmm. my training and waking up early and doing this and like I have like my plans for fitness because I love that shit. Shannon doesn't care about macros. But I also don't care about home decor at all. She loves home decor. So this like clicked in my brain because I was like, why, like, why we, we don't need that shit? Like, right. what the? And then I realized like she loves that. Like I love tracking macros. <laughs> and like I remember having this conversation. We laughed about it because it sounds so silly. But it's like, like you have to let me weigh my food and track my macros because that makes me happy. Just like I need to let you do your thing with this and this and this because that makes you happy. Right. And when you can have that type of uh, – understanding i think it helps a lot too with those relationships um but those are two books for me on on this question um that have influenced me uh but i mean there's so many i I think like the the most impactful books i've ever read have been the go-giver the one thing and the leader who had no title those are probably my top three And for me i would say the one thing for sure and the purpose-driven life Mm. right and and the good old bible yeah yeah the bible is it's intriguing to me because there's just so many different ways that actually people can take what it says. Yeah, interpret right? it. So to me, it's more of like, how can I interpret, like, how do I feel? Or what is it saying to me mm-hmm. in, in a personal way? So. Yeah, I love it. Um, let's go with one more. This is a good one. Johanna Hernandez. From your guys' experience, what makes you want to hire that coach? In other words, how do you find the right type of coach for you? Again, I think we spoke on it a little bit. Is just there has to be something that that person has that you that you mm-hmm. want, right? Um, even down to it can be as specific as again business, right? Like, do I want do you want to get a specific business coach that does specific business coaching, like for what it is that you're in, or do you want somebody that's just been successful in business, right? Because I think when you have that conversation with yourself of what it is that you're really looking for you might have to try a couple coaches mm-hmm. to really see, first of all, what's even out there if you've never had a coach before, right? I have some clients that have never had any type of coach before and and they're successful with me. That doesn't mean that they wouldn't be successful with somebody else, right? So I think for me, it's always been, and I think we spoke about it to where, you know, one of my coaches is somebody that mentored me through college and, I, you know, I kind of saw what he had and it aligned with what I wanted at the time and, and over time, it's kind of grown into really just like a father figure to a certain, to a certain extent. Um, but I think the first question would be is just what is it that that person has or what do they stand for? And does that align with who you're trying to be or where you're trying to get? Yeah, I think that if I look at like the the coaches I've been invested myself in over the last few years, it's actually funny. Like uh, subconsciously, I did that and I didn't realize it. So like mm-hmm. uh, when I hired Steve – what stood out to me is his, his confidence. Like he can own a room. He's mm-hmm. fucking hilarious. He's, he's confident where he's at. And I desired that. Like right. I wanted to be confident in who I was and who I was becoming as a man. Um, when I hired Jason, like he had a type of notoriety in the nutrition world that I really wanted. Like I wanted to build my name up like he did. And I watched how he did it. Mm-hmm. Now I have that notoriety. Right. Uh, when I hired you, the first thing I told you is I was like, man, like you have the business, you have the confidence, you have all that stuff, but like you have a happy family too. Mm-hmm. And that's why I hired you. Mm-hmm. So I think like that's a really good way of putting it is like seeing the person you want to become, like does the person you're going to hire have any of that in them? Right. And then the other side of it, I would say too, is I think you have to um, respect the individual you hire on a high uh, basis because otherwise that accountability doesn't hold as much value. Right. Because if you respect somebody to a great extent, them holding you accountable holds way more weight and, and you do not want to disappoint that in person. Right. Um, as, as crazy as that and, sounds. And it's, and it's funny cause I hear that all the time, right. To where, you know, clients say that like, Oh man, like I was dreading, you know, yeah. having this conversation with you. Not that, I mean, I'm not going to do, I can't do anything to you. I'm not yeah. going to like physically hurt you <laughs> or, you know what I mean? I'm not going to fine you or anything. It's just, but the respect is, 
almost like with your parents, right? Yeah. Like it actually hurt more when they said they were disappointed in you yeah. than when they were just mad at you. Yeah. Right. So it's this exact same thing. And I agree with that hundred percent to where like, it's that extra umph, if you want to say to where you'll want to do the things one, because you know that they have your best interests at heart. And two, because you don't want to disappoint. Yeah. I think uh, it even actually plays a, a big role in like nutrition coaching. Cause I know for me, because I am who I am and I put out the content I do and I'm very trustworthy. Like I really like put all my weight in like being somebody that people can trust. My clients respect me and their adherence is high. Like I've had multiple right. conversations with other coaches. Like how do you get your clients to adhere so well? And like there was never like a hack I could give them. Right. Like here's the tracking system. Do it. It's like honestly I, I truly believe it's just like the level of trust, respect, and communication that I have with those individuals is they don't want to disappoint me and, and I don't want to disappoint them. And it allows that adherence to go up. Well, and I think the the big thing with coaches nowadays is r- truly finding a coach that will cut it off, mm. right, if they're not the right coach. And I, I just recently brought a client on that had a coach for, I think, like four years, right? And with her, it was like she kept waiting to, for, like, that to cross that hump, like, but – because she re- respected him so much, she kept like almost like the benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt. And all in all, it really just came to the point of like she should have stopped this three years ago, right? But she invested for four years because in a way, it was almost like she wasn't doing everything she was supposed to be doing. So that's why she wasn't reaching was where she mm-hmm. was. But because there was no tracking, oddly enough, I asked her, I was like, well, how'd you know you weren't getting how, you know, like every week, did you guys have a tracking numbers? And well, no, it's like, well, then how did you know? Yeah. Right? So to me, it's that honest conversation of like after two, three months, if, if it's not working, like, again, the proof is in the numbers, <laughs> right? Like these were your goals. You haven't hit any of them. Guess what? Maybe I'm not the right coach for you. I, it's funny. Cause I had two conversations with clients yesterday on that same note, but opposite. Like one guy was it was like a confuse as to why the results weren't happening. And I was like, well, I haven't seen you track anything in, in the tracker. Well, you know, it's been tough with this, this. And I was like, oh, what about the workouts? Are you progressing? Well, I haven't been writing down my weights. And it's like, <laughs> right. that's, that's the <laughs> measurability. That's the right? point, yeah. And then the other person was like doubting, creating stories. Like, I'm just like fucking this up, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm literally looking at your numbers. Like, you're progressing. It's like, we literally can't, like, we can't like fall into this story in your head because – Look at the pattern right. of success that you've had over the last six months. Right. That's proof. Like right now you're just going through a period of time where you're down on yourself. Like right. that's all it is. Right. Like I don't know if it's just an emotional thing, if it's a comp- comparison, it's posture syndrome, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. You're creating a story in your head because the numbers don't lie. You're improving. Right. right. So I think it well, goes both ways. And sometimes, you know, a, a coaching client can come on and be like, this is my goal. Right. For instance, I want to lose weight. Mm. Right. Or I want to better my relationship with food or whatever it is, along with I want to make my family time better and all that. So over time, it might not reflect on the scale. It might not even reflect like she might not have lost any weight. But to hear the you know what? But I felt so good yesterday because I opened the fridge and there was a, a box of Thin Mints. And I didn't like before I wouldn't eat them because I knew what roller coaster would take me on. Mm-hmm. Like I, I literally would feel bad. And yesterday I felt. Like I actually had a decision that I can make and I'm going to be okay with my decision. Right. So that in itself is, man, that's, that's huge. Yeah. Right. As opposed to, well, I lost three pounds, but I still struggle with wanting to eat a thin mint. Yeah. Right. Well, with her, it's like, man, I opened the fridge over there. Like I literally was like, eh, I'll have one tomorrow, but I'm okay right now. Shut yeah. Up. Right. So, so there's, but even that are coaches discussing that with you, right? Like I, the first thing I thought was like, man, I'm for one, I'm proud of you. And two, that's a huge win. Yeah. And let's, let me tell you why. Two weeks ago, we talked about this. Remember, you struggled with this? Yeah. And, and she was just like, you know what? And like that, just that feeling of like, I'm, I think it's finally clicking. I'm good. Even though I haven't lost any weight. Yeah. I might have even gained weight in that time frame. Yeah. But that's freedom, though. It's freedom. Yeah. Right. So are those things, even though that's really not trackable, but are they being brought out and actually opening your eyes to them? Yeah. That's huge. Awareness. Yep. I love it, man. We're going to wrap it up there. Um, do you have any parting notes, parting words for the, for the people? No. I think to sum it up is just do what makes you happy. Do it every day. And, and, if, you, and if you truly are trying to get to a specific place or a specific level, 
that you have to track. Yeah. You have to. 100%. And 100%. Yeah. Um, Instagram is Andres La Tribu. Andre, Andres V La Tribu. Okay. Yeah. So follow him there and it's latribucoach.com. La Tribu Coach. Put all that in the show notes, guys. Uh, if you're interested in anything Andres does or you just want more advice, more help, more guidance from him, he's constantly giving it out for free on his Instagram. Um, that's the place to go. Check it out.